Good morning. Good morning. We welcome all our visitors today, who are many. <laughs> For our TV audience, this is Trinity Lutheran Church of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, we have our younger kids singing today, uh, so they'll be singing in after the epistle and before the gospel. The former principal of our school, uh, Richard Gottschalk, has died. So, in the announcements, I'll give the the web link for where to leave memorials. But um, so that was Richard Gottschalk has passed on. So, all right, uh, it is Transfiguration today, which is Peter, James, and John going up the Mount of Transfiguration and seeing Jesus in His glory with Moses and Elijah. So. Uh, that's what the sermon will be about. And our opening hymn is 413, A Wondrous Type of Vision Fair. Our service begins on page 184 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The intro it is found on your insert. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. The Lord reigns, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king in his might loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord their God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain for the Lord our God is holy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. transfiguration of your beloved son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, 
you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the transfiguration of our Lord is from the book of Exodus, chapter 24. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Ubahu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet as it were a pavement of sapphire stone like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua and Moses went up into the mountain of God and he said to the elders, wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain and Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of 2 Peter, the epistle reading. Chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain, and we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them and a voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Our next hymn is Jesus on the Mountain Peak, number 415.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus had 12 apostles the day of the transfiguration. He took only three with him to see him in his glory. It was Peter, James, and John. Why those three? Let's ponder why each of the three might have been chosen. Starting with Peter, he needed this glorious vision of Jesus because he fought hardest against Jesus saying he must suffer and die. Matthew 16 says, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Peter was given the gift of the glorious vision because he needed to see it to move his mind away from thinking about and opposing Jesus' suffering and dying on the cross. He needed to switch from just thinking about mere human concerns to thinking about mighty heavenly things of the Lord. Jesus didn't want his son Peter to continue being a stumbling block to Jesus' death and in the future of preaching Christ crucified. This is something liberal Christians despise the suffering and blood and death of Christ that redeem mankind. They're fine with the transfiguration. It's all glory. And when they fail to talk about what Jesus was discussing with the prophets that day, namely Jesus' suffering and death. Though glorified were all three, Jesus, Elijah, and Moses, they did not talk about glorious things. But shining as bright as the sun, they discuss the bitter darkness soon to come to Jesus on the cross. The real focal point of liberal Christian hate is any talk of being saved by physical blood, even that of the Son of God. That's primitive, unenlightened, disgusting. They want no part of it. It has even influenced Missouri Synod Lutherans to a point, though it should not at all. In the 1941 hymnal, we had the hymn, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. In the 1982 hymnal, which to be fair was a joint venture with the ELCA, changed that hymn to, There stands a fountain where for sin Emmanuel was slain, and sinners who are washed therein are cleansed from every stain, are cleansed from every stain. In the 2006 hymnal, it wasn't watered down any further. It was simply eliminated. It's not in our hymnal. The 1982 version, is, it isn't even clear if the fountain is water or Jesus' blood. That was on purpose. In the 1993 Wisconsin Synod hymnal, the title is still, There is a Fountain Filled with Blood, but then the watering down, Emmanuel was slain, and sinners who are washed therein lose every guilty stain, lose every guilty stain. Remember, the original was, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. That's explicitly, clearly, and without a doubt, a hymn about Jesus' saving blood. St. Peter was the first person to despise Jesus' blood and death. Peter was so wrong in doing this that Jesus called him Satan and told him, get thee behind me. Jesus didn't even want to look at Peter after he voiced his desire that Jesus not bleed and die. So St. Peter needed to be strengthened in his faith for the nearing day when he would see that same glorious Lord with two prophets at his side, instead humiliated, bleeding, and stuck between two thieves. Are we offended by the blood and death of Christ, or do we embrace it as our salvation? The latter is the better option, as it is the way of saving faith. 
How can we take communion rightfully, rightly and meaningfully if we don't acknowledge it is, mysteriously somehow, the true blood of Christ that takes away sin? If we are failing to acknowledge that, we drink nothing but condemnation upon ourselves with that wine. You don't have to understand how the wine is the true blood of Christ. In fact, you can't. But you do have to believe it is what Jesus says it is, his blood for the forgiveness of sins. The second person mentioned as being at the Transfiguration was St. James of Jerusalem. He was the first bishop of the Christian church, not St. Peter. And being the head of the new church, he was a huge target for the church's enemies' hatred. Acts 12, 1 to 3, it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. St. James needed the vision of Jesus in glory to get through the experience of Jesus on the cross, just like Peter. But James didn't oppose Jesus' bleeding and dying, so there was another reason for St. James to be honored with seeing the transfiguration. He needed that glorious vision to recall as his head was on a chopping block and the ax was descending to his neck. The application to us is easy. Right now in the world, Christians are being martyred, often by beheading. What will you do if martyrdom comes to America? Renounce your faith and live, or kneel for your beheading? To help you, if this ever happens, we can think of glorious Jesus from the Transfiguration, or the glorious Jesus victor over death at Easter. Either will fill you with hope and drive away fear at a terrifying time. St. James was the first apostle to be martyred. The third person to see Jesus in glory before his death was St. John the Evangelist. Like the other two, the vision was to help him through seeing the crucifixion, as he alone stood at Jesus' side at the cross. Besides the two thieves, between them and Jesus were St. Mary, Mother of God, and the disciple Jesus loved, St. John. What other reason was St. John given an extra shot of seeing Jesus in glory? St. Matthew wrote the gospel with the perspective of Jesus being true man. St. Mark and St. Luke follow the same pattern of declaring Jesus God, but strongly pointing out his humanity. Only St. John the Divine wrote a gospel different than the other three, declaring Jesus true man, but heavily focusing on how Jesus was true God. Two of the first three Gospels tell us Jesus was born in human flesh. Only the fourth Gospel, John's, started with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Matthew and Luke discuss the details of Jesus' physical birth. John starts with Jesus' pre-existence of everything and as co-creator of everything with his father. John used his Wayback Machine to go way farther back to the eternal existence of the Son of God. John doesn't give us an example of wrong thinking like Peter did. He doesn't prepare us for martyrdom like James did. No, John had no error and was the only apostle to not be martyred and die a natural death. John simply points our attention to things above and heavenly to help us avoid being too earthly minded like Peter was. So that's our cast of three witnesses to the transfiguration, a denier, a martyr, and a saint. The first to help us with unbelief and making plans contrary to God's will. The second to help us face death. The third to revel in the glory of the Lord and secure our hope of heaven. 
This transfiguration also strengthens our faith in the transfigurations we go through from darkness and blindness to light and sight, from sinners to saints through his blood and forgiveness, which he won for us on the cross. And finally, when we are transformed from our dull, weak forms to shine with the radiance with which Jesus shone at the transfiguration. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the offering. We stand and sing The Created Me on page 192. Bless our school, its teachers, and all our students. Uh, give them opportunities to teach and opportunities to grow. Help the students to learn both the regular subjects and the Word of God so that their souls may go to heaven. Lord, in your mercy. For our Sunday school, who have much the same purpose but just teaching the Word of God, help them to do so and for the little hearts to be open to receive such faith. Lord, in your mercy. For those suffering in the Ukraine and those suffering in Russia, both held captive by a crazy dictator, help them to get, draw strength from the word of the Lord, knowing that Jesus is their Lord, who is their Savior. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick, for health and healing, Braden, Jack, Hope, Sylvia, Levi, Judy, Robert, Steve, Reverend Jerry, Christopher, Lori, Bill and Lois, and Karen. 
Give them strength of body and strength of soul to face the challenges they are facing. Lord, in your mercy. For the family of, of Richard Gottschalk at his passing, give them the hope of the resurrection and the certain hope that life is eternal in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Let's start by giving the kids a hand. Okay. And we once again welcome all our visitors uh, and our members. Uh, okay, this was the last Sunday that we sing the happy parts of the service because Lent's about to start. Um, for the Lenten season, which starts this Wednesday, announcements for the bulletin must be in the office by noon on Monday to be printed in the bulletin. Uh, Steve Smith had triple heart surgery stents put in, and he is now home and recovering well. Uh, former principal and teacher Richard Gottschalk has gone to his heavenly home. Share your pictures, videos, and memories at lifeofmrg.com. Uh, the LWML meets Monday, February 20th at 1230 in the Walther Room. All women are welcome. The hygiene for the homeless box is in the entryway. There is a flyer taped above it listing items needed to donate. Let's see if we can fill the box. We have another box, items for the care package for missionary Pastor Baker's family. Uh, they're in Mongolia. Uh, I think their parishioners live in tents and they move all around that country for the sparse grass to feed their cattle. So his job is very difficult even just finding his parishioners throughout the year. <laughs> Um, but this is a care package. He's got four, four children, three of them who are still in Mongolia. And care packages are just really nice for missionaries to get stuff from home. Uh, please bring your items for the care package to the church no later than February 26th. Winter warm-up meals are still being served Tuesdays uh, from 11.30 to 1 throughout February and March. Um, please come just to eat. It's a free meal. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Lenten season is upon us. Uh, we would like to return to serving meals after Wednesday morning services and before Wednesday evening service. There is a sign-up sheet in the narthex. Please consider serving a meal as a group or as a family or as just friends working together to serve our Lord. And I can see the board. It's black. It's just outside the doors to the left. Uh, consider donating altar flowers for Easter Sunday. As soon as we have information on availability and cost, it will be in the bulletin. Uh, traditionally, Easter flowers are white lilies. <laughs> so I know you like getting colorful ones, but uh, keep, keep the white lily in mind. I'm Paul Van Aken. I uh, just want to add a couple things on to what Pastor already said about the winter warm-up meals. 
People should come eat. It's a really great time for fellowship, and the soup is always good. Jansen's donates soup every week, and then we have volunteers that make the soup. We also need volunteers to help. The one thing that's really cool as someone that has a child at the school, so for school families, if you didn't know this already, the older kids help every week. The fifth and sixth graders help set up. Seventh and eighth graders wash dishes. But there, there is a need for other people to come help. If anybody feels like they have the time and uh, they could devote uh, some time at least once, maybe more than that, to be the meal leader, what that means is coming and making sure the soup is getting warmed up and making, making sure that everything's ready to go. Uh, we also need people to come later in the afternoon uh, because following the health code, you have to let the dishes sit to dry. You can't just dry them and put them away. So somebody needs to come back and put them away. I do that after school sometimes when I can. If there's other parents from school, particularly if you, if you could come and do that before you pick up your kids, if that's what you do, or maybe after with your kid, that'd be a great thing to do. If you want to sign up to volunteer, there's a sign-up sheet at the bottom of the steps to the left on that bulletin board. Okay? That's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor. <laughs> All right. And then our final hymn, at least in the Lutheran Missouri Synod tradition, uh, for Transfiguration is Tis Good Lord to Be Here, number 414. 